And hi everybody, welcome to this verbling class um, for intermediate and advanced English speakers on um, my series about best of British culture. I'm teacher Amy and I'm from the UK um, and so if you want to hear a British accent, well, you can come to one of my classes. Um, in this series of lessons, I am talking about British culture, which can be a bit of a confusing subject <laughs> for um, foreign foreign people. So I'm trying to open up the barrier between British culture and the rest of the world. And so if you want to know about British humour, um, it's such a vast topic that today we're just going to be talking about the art of the understatement. Um, an understatement, well, we're going to find out what that is shortly. So, come on into the class. It's going to be a fun class talking about humour today. Um, and we're going to be talking about not only British humour and British culture, but the comparison between that and um, the humour in your country. So, um, let me just let you know that I have a Facebook page here with Verbling, which I'm going to put here into the chat box now. And if you would like to follow me on Facebook to keep up to date with classes, um, to ask questions, to suggest topics for classes that you would like to see, um, anything really, you can feel free to come along to my Facebook page and post me a message or a comment. And it's a great place to interact with other students as well. Um, and what I try to do is after, after my classes, um, there might be some extra material that I'll put up um, and if you have any more vocabulary questions from the class or any other questions, then feel free to write them down and I'll get back to you. Um, I also offer tutoring sessions here with Verbling. So if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can visit my teacher page. And um, actually, for some reason, it's not coming up correctly. Let me try that one again. Should be a double slash. Yeah, there you go. And the same with Facebook. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring, um, you can have a session just um, me and you to talk about whatever you'd like to talk about to cover areas of weakness that you have specifically, um, to ask some specific questions. Um, some of my students are having longer term classes if they want to work on a specific aspect of their English that they can't focus on in a verbaling general class, then you can um, book a tutoring session with me. And what I'd like to add is, if there doesn't seem to be any space at the right time that you can't find, please feel free to write me a message um, and we'll see what we can do. I should be able to fit you in um, somehow. So, welcome. And we're going to get started by saying hi to who came in first. I think it was Claudio. Hi, Claudio. Hi, Amy. How, How are, are you, you today? I'm fine, thank you. I'm also fine. We both talked at the same time, didn't we? I, <laughs> it's really <laughs> nice to see you at this time of the, of the day. Ah, well, it's nice to see you too. Now, Claudio, have we met before? Yes, about uh, a week ago. Uh -huh. um, remind me, which country are you from? I'm from Chile. Ah, right. No, I remember you. Sometimes if the students change their picture or if yes. I don't have a video, it's hard for me to remember just with your voice. Um, yeah, so sorry. yeah, I changed it. <laughs> but, um, don't worry. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, it's nice to see you. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, yes, thank you. That's you? great. I had a great weekend. I'm here in Spain and the weather has been so warm and beautiful. Um, it's like amazing for me, being from the mm -hmm. UK, um, <laughs> where all my family is wearing their woolen, what we call polar neck jumpers already. My dad uh -huh. is wearing that. And I'm here in my t-shirt enjoying the life of Spain. Okay. <laughs> So that's great. All right. Well, good to see you back, Claudio. And hi to Atori. Hi, hi, Amy. How, How are, are you? you doing today? Uh, um, I'm doing fine, thank you. And what about you? I'm great, thanks. 
Um, yep, I've just been saying the weather's so beautiful. How could I not enjoy the day? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yesterday I ate um, a British cupcake. Ah, did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, yes, it was, was very, very tasty. Tell me, Atori, what is the difference between a British cupcake and a non-British cupcake? Well, we don't have something like that, but uh. my mom asked me what is the difference between a British cupcake and a muffin. Then uh, I said I her, I, I will ask teacher Hammy and <laughs> probably she will <laughs> answer us. All right, good. I can tell you the difference between a cupcake and a muffin. Yes. Um, okay, a muffin. Now, let me think about this. There is a difference. Okay, for one thing, a cupcake normally has icing. Um, and it's like, it's normally sweet. You can't get savory cupcakes. So it's sweet, it has icing. It's exactly the same as a big cake that you have for a birthday, but it's just small. Mm -hmm. But a muffin is always small. You can't get a big muffin. Well, you can get ones like this. Um, they're generally American, like mm -hmm. yeah, from America. Yeah, that's a big difference, I guess. Yeah, there, there <laughs> is a big difference. It's kind of hard to put my finger on exactly what the difference is. They're, they're made with different ingredients. So a muffin is more... Um, it kind of sticks in your stomach a bit more. I would mm -hmm. say a, a cake is a bit lighter. If anyone else can add anything to that, that would be great. Oh, it's hard for me to Healthier, too. perhaps? Healthier? Mm, I don't know about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it was good. All right, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, I've lost track of who came in next, so we're just going to go to Alexandra. Good morning. Is she there? Hello, Alexandra. Hello. I was How muted. Are you? Oh, you were muted. Unmute. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you again. Did you have a good weekend? Mm, I think I did. <laughs> oh well, that's good. Did you eat any cupcakes? No, uh, no, unfortunately no. <laughs> no me neither. But a Tory, luckily, well, he, he's just had a, a super duper weekend. <laughs> well, it's good to see you back, Alexandra. Welcome. Thank you. Um, hello to Emad. Hi, Tisha. Uh, and how are you today, Emad? Nice to see you. Uh, I'm, I'm fine, thank you very much. Good, excellent. And we're all doing okay, even though it's Monday, my least favorite day of the week. <laughs> Furthest. Because it's after the weekend? weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, is it the weekend blues? How do they name it? The we my weekend was wonderful, thank you. How was your weekend? No, uh, like... Nothing special, yeah. Nothing special, but yeah. not bad. Yeah, not bad, yeah. Ah, there we go. Uh, you could be using an understatement there. We're going to learn about understatements this lesson. Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome, Emad. Hi to Julio. Hi, Amy. How, How are, are you doing? I'm fine for, for asking. Good. And you haven't moved underwater, have you? You're still on the land, living on the land? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was uh, in a trip this weekend. A diving yeah, trip? But, uh, no, no. Ah. Uh, uh, above, above the water. Ah, a boating trip? No, no. Uh, a car trip. Ah, a car trip. On the road, yeah? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, yeah, it was very good and uh, and very exciting. I'm glad to hear that, Julio. Um, we had a class the other day on whether humans should live underwater, and Julio was our expert because he likes diving. So that's what we were talking about. No, no, um, no, no, no but I, I like <laughs> All right, welcome back, Julio, and hi to Selma. Hi, Selma. Um, uh, hi, teacher. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks good. for asking. It's good <laughs> to see you back. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend. Busy? And I'm still busy, yes, but in an enjoyable way. 
Oh, well, that sounds like a perfect weekend to me. I'm glad. Glad to hear it. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, hi to Yuki. Hello. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. And H what did you do this weekend, Yuki? Anything exciting? Uh, weekend, uh, oh, already, um, uh, weekend always uh, uh, we have classes of Japanese, so it is it's quite a busy time for us. Yeah. Weekend is a is is quite busy time for us because our students uh weekday uh, uh, our students study start study in 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 school or or work work in weekdays. So we can, the, uh, many many have uh, a desire to study Japanese in in the weekend weekend. So that's very impressive, Yuki. I can't say the same for British people. I have to say, I don't know anybody who studies English at the weekend who lives in England. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys, you Japanese, you just work so hard. You're impressive. I am impressed. Well, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be starting our class um, with a question, okay, because this fascinates me. I am British, just in case any of you didn't realize, um, and my culture is, is always talking about humor. It's such an important part of my culture that I didn't really realize how much it affected the way I live until I left and went to live in New Zealand and discovered um, there was a difference. So it's what I would like to explain is that um, a lot of you will probably know British comedies, uh, maybe British movies that are funny, and there's some really famous ones like, for example, Monty Python you've probably all heard of. And what we're going to be discussing today in this lesson is um, how, what, what is British humour and how does it differ from humour in other countries? Does it differ? And also how, what, what sort of variations there are. And one of the main, main sort of aspects of humour in Britain is the idea of an understatement. Okay, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. And I've spelt it wrong. That's a bit of a sin, isn't it? Let's type that again. Um, Wawi ya, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> how, did you have a good weekend? Um, it's not uh, really a good because I stopped uh, smoking um, and now I'm suffering. <laughs> uh oh. Well, <laughs> try good, to. It's good. <laughs> Try to keep your cool in this class, okay? Maybe <laughs> the humor will relax you so that you can just, you know, not I stress. I love that. I love right. that. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So we'll carry on. Yep. Yeah, Monty Python, um, it, well, they're very famous. Um, okay. So I'm going to ask um, everybody the question, what do you find funny, okay? If you think about your life, um, for me, I'll give you an example. The, the things I find most funny are when I have the same experience as somebody else. It doesn't sound like it would necessarily be funny, but oftentimes when you're going through something in your life and it might be like really stressful, and then you hear someone else having the same experience, it's such a relief or such a kind of like, oh, feeling. I just find that really funny. So I want to know, what, what do you find funny? Is it TV shows? Is it experiences, comedians? What is funny for you? Alexandra. <laughs> She's already laughing. I think I she finds me funny. <laughs> no. Um, maybe um, I find funny... Um, Stand up performers, stand up, stand -up comedians, stand up comedians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, uh, Russian as well as American. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the stand up comedians who made me laugh was an American guy who tried to uh, <clears throat> to uh, um, reproduce uh, Russians speaking 
uh, the American language, the intonation and uh, those things, and he did it so well that made me really laugh. <laughs> All right, that is very true. Okay, so making fun of mm -hmm. things, people, etc. I have to admit, if someone does it well, it's very funny. I completely agree, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Antonio, hi. How are you? And also, what, what do you find funny? Are you there? Hello, Antonio. I wonder if you're having connection problems. Are you muted? Can you unmute yourself? No. Nope. All right, Antonio, I can't hear you. See if you can fiddle around with your settings and I'll come back to you, okay? We'll go to Claudio. What do you find funny? Uh, well, I think uh, comedians in stand-up comedies, I agree with Alexandra. Mm -hmm. and they, and they, they, they usually uh, take things of uh, reality and and uh, news, uh, recent recent news for for make funny of of them, and they... make fun of yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you, Claudio. Um, and imitations so, as well. Yeah, imitations. Uh -huh. Sort of like what Alexandra was talking about. Um, all right, Emad, what do you find funny? Uh, lots of things. <laughs> I'm not sure about. <laughs> yeah. Lots of um, things. You laugh yeah. all the time. <laughs> Not all the time, but um, can't speak about something specific. I think everyone like uh, would share the same thing. Like what you said. Like if I have heard someone uh, had the same experience or be in the same situation that I'm living with uh, and right now, mm -hmm. that looks like kind of relief for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, same as me. That's true, Emad. Um, what we often talk about is a sense of humor. You have a good sense of humor. It means that you find you easily are able to laugh or make a situation lighter. So yeah. if you have a friend who has a good sense of humor, that's good. All right, Atori, what about you? Well, I I find myself funny. Well, I, I have a good sense of humor, I guess. Uh -huh. And uh, yes, after all, it's all up to us, I believe. So if we if we are really in the good mood and we we can, you know, just take something also easier with more, I don't know, with more fun. I I guess we are all going to laugh about something. Absolutely, and uh, you know, it can be uh, it can be really really good. All right, you've brought up a good point. Laughing at yourself. If you, I always find the people who can successfully do this are the most relaxing people to be around. Um, yeah. And you always is that Antonio? Hello. Antonio. Sorry. Hello. Hello, everyone. Now. Hi. I fix it. I fix it. You fixed your problem. Excellent. Well, tell us what you find funny, Antonio. Do you find computer problems funny? I don't. <laughs> yes, I have a computer problem, <laughs> but it isn't funny. Yeah, agreed. I find technological problems completely unfunny. So what do you find funny? Uh, um, I find funny, uh, for example, I uh, go with my friend uh, the, on Wednesday a uh, local who where a man a lot in life uh, tell us tell um, a comedian or mm -hmm. something like that yep so stand up it's comedy comedy is a monologue and I, must, I don't know how we say monologue Mon mm -hmm. monologue yes okay all right yeah, that can be incredibly clever. I have to agree. I'm impressed um, with people who can who can just talk um, for a long time and it be very very funny. 
All right, thanks, Antonio, and welcome. Let's go to Julio. What do you find funny, Julio? Well, as Alexandra, I, I like the, this, this kind of uh, stand-up comedies or comedians. Uh, and, uh, and certain uh, sitcoms, comedies. Sitcoms, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like uh, to, to make fun of uh, uh, daily life situations or problems or, or things like that, but uh, which are a, a different overlook of uh, these situations. I think uh, if you uh, change if you can change these situations with a with a pluralism uh, view, I think uh, it, it would be uh, very funny. Absolutely, I have to agree with you, Julio. Um, what what sit sitcoms or situation comedies do you like watching? For example, as you said, uh, uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus mm -hmm. is is one of my my favorites. Because uh, it's, it's, it's a way to 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 see different uh, common situations by a, a surrealism uh, way, and I, I I like very much these these TV series and uh, the movies uh, related with uh, Monty Python. Great. Me too. I have to say. Thank you, Julio. Um, okay, Mawia, what do you find most funny? Uh, uh, I, I like here there is something uh, we call local YouTube uh, comedy ch channels. Uh -huh. uh, it, it's like it's like a stand-up uh, comedy, but uh, uh, these people prepare the uh, uh, their talk before behind the ca camera and start talking about social and the current uh, uh, political issues mm -hmm. then they will publish this video for uh, uh, on youtube uh, weekly this this video weekly uh, and i watch it and i cannot stop uh, laughing when i watch this video because it's talk about something about our culture current yeah. issue about our culture it's it's, it's very fun uh, yeah, that's so true, isn't it? It's because we so often have such serious news um, that when someone can look at it from another point of view and make you laugh, it it's, can be incredibly funny. Yes. All right, Selma, your turn. Well, uh, actually, I have two things that really makes me... Uh, I mean, they are funny for me. Uh, the first one is when I see babies smiling. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it's kind of beautifully resistant and captivating. And also the second thing is when I see my cat imitating the things that we do. For instance, if we sit on chair, she just do the same thing. Really? So, yes. <laughs> Animals can can be so funny. That's true, actually. No one else has brought that up. Thank you, Selma. Um, animals and children, they sometimes they are so funny and they don't realize, which makes it even funnier. Uh, um, you I keep, what, what about you? Ah, oh, question from Emad, yeah. Yeah. What is the story of your name, Blabber Like a Bird? Uh, Pardon? Your name on G Blast. Uh, it's, it's been Blabber Like a Bird. Your name in GBlast, did you notice that it's uh, in GBlast, Google Glass, if you notice your name? Can you type it for me, Emad? I'm not sure what you mean. Type it for okay. me in the chat box. I guess he is talking about your, about your name on, uh, on Google Glass. It's like ah, something like blabber like blabber a Brit. Blabber like a Brit. Yeah. Yeah. Is Thanks it uh, an idiom expression? What, what is it? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, it's the name of my blog, which I which I write with my sister, um, and we're both British um, girls, but we've lived in different places. And to blabber means to chat. Yep, exactly right, Atori. Um, blabber is like someone if they blabber, they go on and on and on, and they never shut up. And so it's a little bit of a joke, um, but we we wanted to make it sound a bit 
kind of fun. So Blabber Like a Brit, the idea of our blog, um, we haven't been doing it for that long, but it's to show show you how to speak like a British person and to try and uncover some of the weird stuff that goes on in our country. Yeah, okay. All right, Yuki. Hello, uh, yes. I, um, mm -hmm. What do you find funny? I like to uh, watch watch uh, com I I like wo I like to watch comic show. Mm -hmm. uh, especially I I am fond of uh, English comedy show. Yep. Uh, English comedy uh, kind of uh, Monty Python, Monty Python, mm -hmm. uh, Austin Powell, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Bean. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Bean. Uh, I also I I I I I love uh, Russian joke. Uh, Russian people are uh, very, very li like to uh, like to say joke. They, uh, they have uh, they have their their own special jokes. So I, I love I love I love that, that I love them. Uh, also, I, I like to watch a Japanese uh, comedy show. Mm -hmm. There are many many uh, comedians in Japan. Uh, uh, there is a traditional Japan, a traditional style of Japanese comedy, uh, like rakugo manga, uh, manzai. Rakugo is uh, storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, traditional story, storytelling uh, by one person. Uh, manzai is comic di dialogue by two mm -hmm. comedians. So there are many fun, 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 fun things in in the in in the world. I I I find interesting interesting that uh, culture culture of 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 every country uh, effect to their their way of joking. Yeah, so that's absolutely it's very right. Interesting, yes. It is, isn't it? And when you're learning another language, sometimes it can be really insightful. Yes. It can Cal open up another world for you. Yes, their, cal their culture and of habit, uh, ha habit uh, is is strongly connected to their joke, their joke, their joke, their their joking. So it is very interesting. Exactly right. That's what we're going to talk about today, actually, Yuki. Um, you brought up some good phrases. I just want to look to point out. We use the word, the verb "tell" to tell jokes rather than to say jokes, and you refer to a thing we call "in jokes." That means that um, it's a private joke between people who are referring back to a situation that they've previously had together um, that other people may not necessarily understand. So if if it's an in joke, you'll have those with your best friends or your family. All right, Alexandra, I'm going to type a definition of an understatement. I've put it into the chat box. Could you please read it for us? Mm -hmm. A figure of speech in which a writer or speaker deliberately makes a situation seem less important or serious than it is. Contrast with hyperbole. Mm -hmm. Hyperbole, we say. Hyperbole, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so the understatement. This is I've chosen this because it's such a British thing that it's it's almost um, inseparable from British language. If you read things, if you hear people speaking, we are continually using understatements. Um, okay, so we'll go over it. An understatement is basically saying that something is m saying something much less than what it actually is. It's the opposite of exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Does everyone understand that, first of all, before we move on? It's mm -hmm. quite important. Yeah? Great. Okay, let's, get, let's have an example um, from a book. Let's just type this one into the chat box. And if Antonio, could you read the second one for us, please? Can you see that, guys? Let's try again. No? Nope. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. What I read, the definition? Understatement is still in the air. Can you see that? No. No, chat box is, is having a bit of a five minute problem. Let me see if I can put it into the verbling chat box. I mean, the Google chat box. Can you see it in the Google chat box? Yeah. Yes. Off you go. Definition? Uh, no. 
The second one, understatement is still in the air. In the Google, um, not the verbally. Understand. Opposite of exaggeration? No? Mm -mm. I can't read it. Don't worry, yeah. Antonio. I'm going to read it, okay? Okay, um, thanks. Understatement is still in the air. It is not just a speciality of the English sense of humor. It is a way of life. When gales uproot trees and sweep away roofs of houses, you should remark that it is a bit blowy. I have just been listening to a man who got lost in a forest abroad for a week and was scrutinized by hungry wolves smacking their lips. Was he terrified? asked the television interviewer, obviously a man of Italian origin. The man replied that on the seventh day, when there were no rescuers in sight and the sixth hungry wolf joined the pack, he got a bit worried. Yesterday, a man in charge of a home where 600 old people lived, which was found to be a fire risk where all the inhabitants might burn to death, admitted, I may have a problem. All right. So basically, you can see understatement it is, is so... The, the humor from it comes behind the fact that you're saying something that's so incredibly less than what you actually mean, it becomes humorous, okay? Mm. So, what we're going to do is we're going to read, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you. See you later, Tori. Sorry that you have to go. Um, and we're going to read um, something from a, a really handy website, which you guys might like to look at later on. Let me share my screen. And what I will do is get Antonio to read this for us since he missed out. Um, yes. Reading just before. Just a second. Yes. This is happening. There we go. Can you, you all, go, all see that? Deb Brits, Guide to British Behavior. This website's rather interesting. So the, can, 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 can we have a link of the, this page? Absolutely. Okay. Let's hope the, the Verbling chat box will let me paste it in. It seems to be... There we go, it's worked. Thank you. you got the link, everybody. And Antonio, could you go ahead and read this uh, um, passage on understatement for us, please? Okay. Uh, the stiff upper lip is under... Okay, thanks. Now? Yeah. Yep. The stiff upper lip is underpinned by understatement, a very British way of speaking which resolutely refused to succumb to drama excitement of high emotion. Sometimes British understatement is undeniable, amorous. A famous example is the Monty Python sketch where the Green Reaper turns up a suburban dinner party and ins insists that all the West accompany him. Well, one of the party West's remark, that's cast the rather a gloom over the evening hasn't it? Mm, but understatement isn't always the plot. To raise a law, it permits British speech. Conversation is littered with moderating expression, such as quite, rather, a bit, actually not bad is high price, and not bad at all is possibly euphoric. Nowhere, yes, and nowhere is, the, is this more apparent than in dialogue about the weather. A bit nipping is considered an appropriate description of sub-zero temperatures rather than describe a monsonal deep pole. Don't confuse understatement with and the direction, read between the lines, the lines, and you will find the missing drama and emotion. Thanks, Antonio. Okay, now this, that was quite tricky, that reading. Um, there's a lot of words in here that we're going to just quickly go over um, so that we all understand what this is saying. Um, okay, so there's a lot of British stuff in here that we'll talk about. The first one is this, the stiff upper lip. Have you heard of that before, anybody? Does anybody know what it is? No, no. No idea. Yeah, it's a, it's like a 
Uh, like a headache or something like that. It's like a, uh, a if connected with uh, something is is very. Hard. Sorry, Julio, yeah. that was great. I can't hear you too well. Okay, do you hear me now? That's better. Yep. Okay, could you just repeat what you can just you, said? Yes. Yeah, I. I Exactly, but I I I, I guess that um, is is something like like a headache, uh, something very bad for oneself. Uh, is is uh, and still is is something uh, that uh, harm us or 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 like that. That is a really yeah. great try, Julio, but you're completely wrong. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think uh, I think we did the, I think we did the, the, the expression of emotion. Yeah. Very good. Uh, you kind yeah, of yeah, uh, kind of fear or uh, grief. Yeah. Not quite. Uh, this is. Um, I'm no? gonna just let. I'm just gonna tell you guys because this is very tricky. Um, Maybe. This, yep, Alexandra. Maybe it means that they speak in a reserved way. Perfect. Absolutely right. Yep. That the British stiff upper lip is is describing the kind of probably not particularly positive way that British people are very reserved and private, and they try to put on a front so that people don't actually know what they're really feeling. I don't know whether you've come across this before. I know that other cultures are a lot more open, which I personally prefer. But my own culture is is a little bit kind of private, reserved, and this is what we refer to the stiff upper lip. So thanks for your try, Julio. That was great. But it was now you know what it really is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Thank it's you. underpinned by understatement. Um, what does underpinned mean? Anyone? No? Tricky, hey. What it really means is that one of the main supporting factors of this British um, way of speaking. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's supported exactly right by understatement. Underpin. So it kind of goes together if you think about it. If you're quite a private person and you don't really like show your emotions and, and, and say really what you think, then understatement is the perfect thing for you to use because it doesn't show too much. Um, and it says, which resolutely refuses to succumb. So basically, it's just, we're basically kind of swallowing our emotions down. It's very unhealthy and using understatement instead. Um, I wouldn't recommend this, by the way, for all of you who come from different countries. Um, so this is obviously humorous. Um, you can see that a lot of um, comedy British TV shows and everything um, uses it. But as it says here, it's not always used for comedy. It's, it's just normal conversation in the UK. We always use boring phrases like quite, rather, a bit, actually. And it says not bad is high praise. And not bad at all is positively euphoric. So if you hear a British person say, oh, it's not bad at all, what they really mean is it's probably the best experience they've ever had in their life. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to visit another web page um, and do a little quiz. Okay. Let me put it for you in here. And I'll also give you the link if you want to visit the page yourself. Bye, Julio. Sorry that you have to go. So there you go. Um, and this is um, from someone who writes an American blog, and they write a little bit about the British understatement. So let's just read the introduction, and then we're going to do the quiz. Who is going to read for us? Um, Claudio, please, could you read? Uh -huh. um, I would like you to just read this part here, please. Okay. Fellow blogger Sputnik made me chuckle when he stopped by the other other day and mentioned it was minus 40 in Siberia, so a bit nippy. Yeah, why, yes. Uh, that might make someone want to pop on another bar of their uh, electric heater. 
understatement it's harder to come by in America than the UK and I confess I'm missing it a bit there's plenty of sarcasm here in the a sense that just stands for British English British English mm -hmm. very briefly Ber a the, the opposite of what you mean I'm I'm um, a American Na English yep nasty or unkind see here and here for more on that difference but understatement is in short supply in America or maybe I'm just used to getting large doses the anthropologist anthro anthropologist yep. Kate Fox says keep going read the quote for us the English are rightly renowned for their use of understatement not because we invented it or because we do it better than anyone else but because we do it so much well maybe we don't do it a little bit better if only because we get so much practice at it thank you Claudio great reading so just to remind you BRE that just stands for British English and AME is American so it's just contrasting the different types of usage of English because um, the understatement is used so much in the UK um, whereas Americans tend to do the opposite they tend to use exaggeration more so what I'm telling you guys is if you can master the art of understatement you will enjoy your time in the UK if you ever go there a hundred percent more and make much more uh, more of your time there because it's so so ingrained in our kind of personalities okay um, so let's move down the page and we're gonna do a quiz so I just want to point out this phrase here what does a bit nippy actually mean very cold Yes, actually, literally, it means a little tiny bit cold. But because we're using it as an understatement, it means absolutely freezing, minus 40 degrees, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can match up some understatements with their actual meanings down here. All right, so here we have a list of... Um, truthful situations on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have a description which you probably hear a British person use to describe a situation so let's see if we can match them up um, Emad can you do number one and which which do you think goes with number one can you read it out and then yeah. choose the answer yeah um Debil uh, debilitating deb debilitating and painful chronic illness mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. very friendly Could be, mm, be. good try but no you've got to imagine you're in the situation and you're talking about this debilitating and painful chronic illness and what do you think if you were talking to a British person and they have this painful illness you'd say oh that sounds terrible and they'd say well it's it could be B for example uh, sorry F, F? Mm, yeah. no uh, so it's not bad <laughs> like itch <laughs> <laughs> Doing Maybe. well, Emad, but no. no. Anyone have any suggestions? You can see. Yes, Alexandra, she's got the hang of this. It's <laughs> C, a bit of a nuisance. So what you have to imagine is the reality of it is it's absolutely hell. It completely affects your life in every way. But if you kind of shrink that down, what you end up with is a bit of a nuisance, all right? Well done, Emad. Okay, let's try Mawia. Can you do number two, please? Uh, a truly horrif uh, horrific yep. experience. A truly horrific experience, yep. Um, Do you know what horrific means? 
No, horrific. I don't horrific know. is is absolutely terribly, terribly bad. Um, an experience mm. that you just would never want to have in your life. Yes, um, not very friendly. Nice try, but no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. No, anyone? Anyone have any ideas? What one is it? Which one is it? Not bad. No. Nice try, Alexandra. Gosh, we've got a bit of work to do to get you guys up to scratch for going to to the UK, haven't we? <laughs> All right, I'll give you the answer to this one. It's actually D. Ah. Okay, not exactly what I would have chosen. So these kind of phrases are so common that they make me laugh just reading them because I realize I say them myself. Um, but if someone's telling you about their terrible, terrible holiday and you say, oh, my God, that sounds awful, they'll say, oh, well, it's not exactly what I would have chosen. Um, but what they mean is, yeah, it was absolute hell. Okay, let's try the next one. Um, sell that, number three. Uh, a size of breathtaking beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's letter G. Yeah. Quite pretty. <laughs> there you go, Selma. You've passed. You can go to the UK. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well done. Um, Yu Chi Su. Hi. 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 Welcome. Are you following okay? Do you know what we're, we're doing? Yes. Great. Can you do number four for us, please? Okay. <laughs> an, out an outstanding performance or achievement. Which do you think it might be? Uh, quite pretty. Quite pretty was what we just used for number three to talk about beauty. So it's not that. Not bad. Not bad. Exactly right. There you go. You've passed as well, Yuchi, so you can go to the UK. Okay, Yukino. Yuki, yes. it's your turn for number five. Yes, number five. An uh, act of... Uh, ad admin, admin, abominable. Abominable. Mm -hmm. cru, cru, cruelty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> so an act of abominable cruelty. I'll give you an example. Imagine um, there's a man and he's, and he's murdered his wife and he's murdered his children and mm -hmm. he's gone on a rampant shooting rage around, around the country and killed 20 people. How yeah. would you describe this man if you were a British person? It's awful, so... <laughs> no? no, not quite. Anyone? Anyone? It, 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 not very it's it's yeah. a bit too hot for my taste. No, no. The answer's B, not very not friendly. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. So they'd say, oh, he doesn't sound like a very friendly man. Okay, it's a complete understatement. He's up, he's more like the devil. Um, but we'd say he wasn't very friendly. All right, excellent. UK, you're going to have to work a bit more before you're allowed into the UK, okay? <laughs> All right, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> okay, Alexandra, it's your turn for number six. An unforgivably stupid misjudgment. Uh, not very clever. Yes. <laughs> All right. So it, this, in this kind of situation, actually, understatement works quite well. It makes you feel better. If you do something really ridiculously bad at work... Yeah, it uh, sounds more polite to use the understatement here. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, imagine you erase the files of your company or something. And, and the whole company falls apart, then your British boss will say, well, that wasn't very clever, was it? And obviously, he's, it's a huge understatement, but at least you don't feel as bad. So there are some advantages. All right, Antonio, it's you for number seven. Okay, <clears throat> the Sahara Desert. Mm -hmm. It's probably uh, a bit too hot for my taste. <laughs> there you no? go. 
Perfect. Well done, Antonio. Okay. okay, and number eight for Claudio. In an exceptionally delightful object, person, or event. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> All right, are you guys getting the hang of this a bit now? Are you following? Um, because we're going to have a little bit of a practice. I just want to find out, um, what do you think? Do you find this kind of um, speaking funny or not? What would you say? Ema, do you find this funny or not? Um, I think I said like never. Pardon? <laughs> and yeah, I'm not very clever in defining the meaning. <laughs> uh, it's difficult, it's isn't one... it? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm using the same as. Uh, and it was not not bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think see. absolutely understand you. Um, one of the reasons why I'm giving these classes on British culture is because I think some of these things are so tricky for foreign speakers. Um, that if you go to England, you hear people say, oh, that wasn't bad, or it was nice. It's hard for you to understand what they mean. It's hard for you to realize um, that they're, um, what they really mean. So what you have to watch out for is for somebody to say something that doesn't have a lot of meaning. Um, like not bad or quite pretty or nice um, and what they mean is is um, it was much more extreme than that so um, let me see what about um, Selma do you find this kind of thing funny Selma or not well I think it needs uh, a lot of practice uh, from <laughs> at the beginning it was a little a bit incom incomprehensible for me absolutely yeah. So, so I may, uh, I may fall in a lot of misunderstanding. Absolutely, yeah, that's that's so true. I'm sure that happens to everybody. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to read some more understatements, okay, to to help you get a bit more, uh, a little bit more idea of what they are. So what I have here is apparently the greatest understatements of all time. So what you have to look for is the irony here, the fact that they're saying, um, there we go, I've accidentally pasted it twice, um, but, but here we have um, 15 situations that happened, real situations, where someone has commented and, and they've used an understatement. Um, see, if, see if this helps you understand a little bit more how it works. All right, so the first one is the mildly important scientific discovery. So, um, who have we got? Let's start from the beginning again. Alexandra, could you read out for us the quote? Uh, I don't see. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, let's see. Just the, can you see the picture? Yeah. yeah. Sure. This structure has novel features which are of considerable biological interest. Mm -hmm. Watson and Crick talking about their discovery of DNA. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to explain the first few to you and I'm going to see if you guys can explain why these are understatements, all right? So the first one is um, Watson and Crick. They're the two guys who discovered DNA, right? A huge scientific discovery. It's probably changed change the way science works. It's absolutely enormously important. And they say, this structure has novel features which are of considerable biological interest. All right? They don't go, wow, look at what we've discovered. They use a complete understatement here. And it's kind of humorous. Um, all right. Let's go on to number two. And this is a malfunction. Um, so. Antonio, can you read this one for us? Flight controllers here are looking very careful at the situation. Obviously, a major map function. Mm -hmm. NASA's mission control spokesman two minutes after the Challenger explode. All right. Thank you, Antonio. Um, major malfunction. Major malfunction. 
All right, let's okay. see. Claudio, can you explain why this is an understatement? What's happened and what do they say about it? Well, he's trying not to to freak out in this situation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> He's trying not to freak out. Basically what's happened is their ship has blown up. It couldn't be worse, could it? I mean, what else could have gone wrong? This is the height of, of, terrible, of a terrible situation. And he just says it's a major malfunction. <laughs> a malfunction is the word that you use when something's gone slightly wrong. Uh, and this is obviously more than that. Uh, but he's trying not to make a big deal of it. That's true. Okay, let's see what the next one is. <laughs> All right, here we go, this one. Um, Emad, can you read out the unfavorable development, please? Mm -hmm. The unfavorable development. The war in the, Pacific, in the Pacific has not necessarily developed in Japan's favor. Mm -hmm. um, Emperor uh, Hiro Hirohoto mm -hmm. uh, surrounding Japan in World War II. Mm -hmm. So, Yuki. <laughs> yes, yes. You're obviously Japanese, yes. and I, you are, aren't you? Yeah, you were t talking to us about Japan. Um, do you use? Do the Japanese use a lot of understatement as well? Um, yes, Japanese. Yes, Japanese comedy has uh, such a feature. Uh, we yeah. uh, we used to uh, use we used to uh, use uh, mm -hmm. uh, understatement. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes. So you, I can see here that you. This is the type of thing that um, a British person would yes. also say when the Brits um, had bad war experiences. Mm -hmm. um, the same exact thing. <laughs> yes. yes. So we have similarities between our cultures, Yuki. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look at this one. This is so British. It makes me laugh. Um, Mawia, can you read out this one? Uh, problem with the ships. Okay, uh, there seems to be something wrong with our bloody ships today. Mm -hmm. um, Admi Admiral Beatty, after two of his ships exploded at the Battle of Jut Jutland during uh, World War One. Yep. So this is, uh, Yuki, this is an example of the British war thing going uh, wrong. And we yes. do exactly the same. And the word bloody is actually a, a slightly a swear word. Um, but it's very mild. And it's a typical British thing to say. There's something wrong with our bloody ships. Well, actually, they've exploded. So it's pretty more than something wrong. Um, okay, let's do this one. We've got a few minutes left. Um, whose turn is it? Selma. The friendly encounter. Oh, someone's phone's ringing. Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Mm -hmm. Journalist, journalist Henry Martin Stanley after a 700 mile expedition through tropical forests in Zanzibar to find the lost missionary uh, David Livingston. Yes, okay, can you explain this one to us? Why is it an understatement? Any idea? No, anyone mm -hmm. else can explain it? Mm -hmm. um, Mm, he was traveling to, he was searching for this expedition, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that when he found them, mm -hmm. uh, of course he was sure that that was Dr. Livingstone, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he was just like, yeah, I presume, so I guess you are Dr. Livingstone? Yeah, exactly. So, so instead of going, Oh my god, finally we found you, thank god, we've been through 700 miles of tropical forest to look for you. He just says, Dr. Livingston, I presume. So it's a huge <laughs> understatement, all right? Because, because imagine what he's been through to find this guy, and, and that's what he ends up saying. All right, <laughs> thanks, Selma. Um, okay, next one, we've got, oh, see if we can fit another one in. Um, let's not do that one. Let's do... <laughs> this one, this is funny. 
Um, Yuchi Su. This has happened last year in the Olympics. Number eight, the fast man. The the man was fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and the red part. Can you read the next part? Athlete. Okay. Athlete what? Water digs, answering an interview question about Usain Bolt's world record, breaking Olympic 100 meter sprint. Yeah. So this guy was was absolutely incredibly fast. He broke the world record, I believe. Yep. Um, in the sprint, and all they said was that man was fast, <laughs> which is. Typical um, British reaction. Um, okay, let me just see. We'll finish off with this last one, which is a bit poignant. Um, Yuki, could you read yes. this last one for us? Okay. I'm just going outside, and maybe some sometime, Antarctic explorer Lawrence Oates before before uh, sacrifice himself by walking out into a blizzard to increase his companion's chance of survival. Yeah. Does anyone know know about this or understand what it's talking about? I feel like uh, he said, uh, and maybe sometime, uh, that was like uh, he's mildly the fact that he spent like, like, um, Many years uh, in the Antarctic, so he he's really not it's, it's not really sometimes it's very huge, yeah, very long time, yeah. Yeah, in actual fact, um, you're you're nearly right there, Imad. You've got the right idea. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you say I may be some time, it means that you might take some time, um, and he is actually going outside, um, and there's a high possibility he's going to die. So the fact that he says I may be some time is a huge understatement. The fact is he's going outside and he may never come back. Um, but because it's the, one of those situations um, of extreme importance, I guess he uses an understatement here to try and lighten the atmosphere because it's such a serious situation and um, he's basically sacrificing his life um, to try and save his companions. All right. Well, everybody, I hope I've helped you a little bit with understanding understatements. Does anyone have any questions before we go? No? Um, I'll see if I can put some more material on my Facebook page to see if, you, if those of you who are um, still thinking this is really weird and I can't understand it, um, have, a, have a bit of another look. Um, and try noticing some understatements in some British comedy if you have a chance. I will put some um, some famous British comedy titles up if you don't know them on Facebook. Have a watch, and I'm sure that you will notice some understatements if you pay attention. All right, so thanks, everyone, for coming today. It was a pleasure to have you all in the class. And Thank you very much. we've got to finish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye. See you. Have a good time. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.